all right here. At this mark of the video, the viewer's vision is focused on an image that I will consider an Easter egg because this image carries a huge message that I want to point out just in case you missed it. Before I forced my hand and used my resources to put pressure on the supporting writers of the transatlantic slave trade story, which made them change their narrative from stating that there were 12.5 million enslaved Africans that were captured and forcefully migrated to the Americas, to now read as 92,000 enslaved Africans as being the total number estimated between 1619 to 1875, I also share detailed information concerning how it would be impossible to travel across the Atlantic Ocean in that fashion. Even if the technology was as advanced as it is today back then, simply due to the rotation of the ocean's current, which nullifies all stories concerning how so-called slave ships traveled to and from. I mentioned all of this again here. Now, let's take things a step further. As you may know, this type of travel was extremely perilous during the time periods prior to any advanced technologies allowing for more partitious routes to be taken. Merchants or sailors traveling across the Atlantic using sailboats had no choice but to take specific routes based on the Volta do Mar Largo, which is a Portuguese phrase meaning turn of the wide sea. This Volta do Mar Largo phrase refers to the oceanic rotation that signifies the ocean's currents, which is why we are taught that the sea is divided into five oceans. These five oceans are also called ocean gyres, in which each of these gyres represents a different ocean current rotation. Listen closely. According to the National Geographic, the North Atlantic Gyre begins with the northward flow of the Gulf Stream along the east coast of the United States. The Gulf Stream is the western boundary current of the Gyre. The Gyre then becomes the North Atlantic Current, which flows across the North Atlantic to Europe. Still flowing in a circular pattern, the current flows south as far as northwestern coast of Africa, where it is known as the Canary Current, the Gyre's eastern boundary current. The Gyre is completed as the North Atlantic Equatorial Current crosses the Atlantic Ocean to the Caribbean Sea. This entire Higher circle and the water within it is the North Atlantic Gyre. End quote. As I've stated numerous times before, this means that only the winds and the currents of the ocean could determine how a boat or a ship was able to travel across the Atlantic, revealing the true reason why explorers initially sailed to South America instead of North America first. Also, the winds and the climate made trading and traveling across the ocean very time-consuming resulting in slowly paced travels that would require several weeks and even months to reach a single destination, yet alone a round trip, all while hoping that the captain sailor has the ability to stay on course. And by the way, this also exposes that these ships were not able to literally travel straight across from one continent to another due merely to the ocean's current, which can be compared to a game of double dutch, since inexperienced and even senior sailors had to jump in these gyres at the right times or they would lose. They were also limited to just having a compass for direction and the use of their hands to tell time, or rather how much daylight was left, by aligning their fingers with the horizon. All of this sounds difficult, doesn't it? According to the Royal Museums of Greenwich, life at sea during the age of sail was filled with hardship. Sailors had to accept cramped conditions, disease, poor food and pay, and bad weather. So, if the sailors had to endure famine for weeks and even months, no pay and no work, 
sicknesses and diseases, treacherous weather climates, and even cramped living conditions, then how would anyone be able to control, feed, and successfully keep alive hundreds to thousands of so-called slaves that were allegedly captured from Africa and packed like sardines below the deck of their sailboats? Many people died for attempting this voyage, making it extremely difficult to even keep the same crew for more than one seafaring trip across the Atlantic. So in hopes of immediately providing a safer passage by learning the hard way, capacity stipulations were forced on the sizes of cargo and the passengers aboard. But these treacherous conditions continued to plague the foreigners for centuries, making it unrealistic to transport millions of so-called slaves from one continent to another. Between the early 1600s to the late 1800s across the Atlantic, this is why you would not find any historical evidence nor colonial documentation of a transatlantic slave trade during this time period. That task would be simply impossible for anyone to accomplish, especially